Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth video in the series of Azure OpenAI service. In this video, we're going to look at how function calling works. So let's say we have a setup like this. We have an AI integrated application that calls Azure OpenAI or OpenAI APIs. Now the application that you're building, it has functions like search for hotels and get weather and things like that. It has already built in functions. Now when you hear the term function calling, what, what comes to your mind? It involves Azure OpenAI doing something like calling a function. So how does it work? Does it calling an API for us? Or does it invoke the functions that we have built in our application? None of this is true actually. So let's understand what actually is happening. Basically, when the user interacts with the application, the user is using natural language. Our application by itself, it can't understand natural language. And because of that, we are passing that user input to Azure OpenAI service or OpenAI service. And what happens is that we get the response back. Now with this response, OpenAI service will tell us which function to invoke. Now let's understand how this works. So basically, this is how we invoke OpenAI service. We're using the engine or the deployment we are invoking and we are passing the history of messages. Now, in addition to these two, now we have to pass in a list of functions and how these functions should be invoked, the behavior. Now, this is the addition that we have to include in the invocation. And in the output of this large language model, it will have the name of the function and the arguments that we should invoke. As I said, Azure OpenAI service, it does not invoke any function. It just tell us which function to invoke. Now, let's say, for example, the user is asking find beachfront hotels in San Diego for less than $300 a month with free breakfast. So this is what the user wants. So what we do is we pass that input to OpenAI service and it will tell us, okay, this is the function that you should invoke in your application, right? Because we are passing all the functions in the application. So Azure OpenAI service, it knows about those functions and the arguments also. So it's going to convert this natural language input to a function call like this. It just sends us a JSON output, something like this one. And one thing that you should keep in mind is that these functions that we are invoking here, these are injected into the system message under the hood. So the more functions you have here, you will have to pay for more tokens. So this is the response that obviously we should have a function in our application called search hotels, right? So that our application can invoke this based on the response that we receive and that search hotels function should match the, the arguments that we have informed. As you can see, it should match all these three arguments so that we can invoke it. So basically, if you're showing the user a natural language output based on the response of this function call. So basically, this function call might be invoking another API, for example. So based on the output of this function call, we need to invoke OpenAI service again, as you can see, to get the natural language output and show that to the user. And there might be cases where we don't have a natural language output. Like for example, when we invoke this function here, it will do some, some kind of a thing in the application. Like it will act as a method that will do part of work of a copilot. So we'll get into that later. So this is the high level flow OpenAI function calling functionality. Now, this is the official documentation for this feature. As you can see, it is still in preview. So as you can see, the latest version of GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 have been fine tuned for this functionality. And this contains some of the things that I have shown you. And it also includes a Python example as well, as you can see, and it shows us how to define functions. So as I have shown you earlier, we need to define functions here. There's a specific format for doing that. Let me show you that as well. So as you can see, this is how you define those functions. We have an array of functions and that is why we are passing here. And that array contains the name of the function and a natural language description of it and the parameters and the type of the parameters and the, uh, the properties that it has. For example, the location, max price and the features and all those parameters, they should have a natural language description like this. So based on these natural language inputs, Azure OpenAI will understand which function to invoke. 
So it's basically like we are passing in a open API definition to not open AI by the way, open API definition um, to open AI server. So it understands all about our APIs and it decides which API to invoke based on the natural language user input. And now if I go into Azure portal, as you can see, we have a open AI service deployed. And if I go into the AI studio and deployments, I have two deployments, as you can see, GPT 3.5 turbo 16 K version and the, the normal version. It doesn't matter really for this demo. And now let's see how we can run this example code here. Let me just create a new Python file. It's really straightforward. Copy uh, the content that we have here. And I'm just going to paste it. All right. We need to pass in the Azure OpenAI key and an Azure OpenAI endpoint. And those things you can find in here. Keys and endpoint section of the Azure OpenAI service. Let me replace the OpenAI key and OpenAI endpoint. Now, the API version matters here. We need to use this API version. And that is a relatively new version and it is still in preview. For this to work, we need to use this API version. We have a list of messages. Like if we didn't have functions, let me just delete the functions and let me just try running this. Let's see whether this works. Yes. As you can see, okay, so yeah, it doesn't really say that it can't. All right. So let's just go back and include the functions here. As you can see, we're just defining the functions. I mentioned how to define this earlier. We are passing that this function here like this. So let's just run it. Let's see how it works now. So this is what we're getting since we're asking it to find beachfront hotels. It's just invoking the function. It just gives us, okay, you should invoke this function in your application to get this results. Now let's look at this function call um, parameter that you're passing in. And if I go into the documentation and if I search for function call, yeah, as you can see here, when the functions are provided by default, uh, the function call will be set to auto. So basically, if we don't have it here, it'll still work. And let's see how it behaves. And if we ask, let's see, if we pass in none, let's see what would happen. Yeah, as you can see, it just, it does not include. Now, if you compare this to auto, it does not include the function call um, object. So basically, it is giving us this um, a little bit random outputs. But it's interesting to see that it just gives it giving us this JSON here, even though we don't ask for a function call. The probably as I told you earlier, these function definitions, these are included in the system message. So that's why I believe we're getting this. And now we understand how this function calling works. And I'm not going to go into um, based on this function call, like add an if condition. And if it is search hotels, I'm not going to add a function call search hotels and invoke that. I think it's pretty clear to you how this works now. But in my next video, I'm going to show you how to do this with C sharp language. And I'm going to also go through this document and cover the rest of rest of it in my next video. All right, this is the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments or any video suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. I will see you in my next video and thanks for watching.